Remember when the American president boldly proclaimed a respect of liberty and the freedoms expressed in the Constitution of the United States? We should give particular attention to the needs of those countries which share our view of the world crisis. Our view of the world crisis is that countries are entitled to national sovereignty and independence. That is all we have ever suggested. That is the purpose of our aid, to make it more possible. Now, if a country has uh, ceased to choose national sovereignty, or ceased to choose a national independence, uh, then, of course, our aid uh, becomes less useful. Well, take a look at who is steering the ship today. The New World Order Panderer-in-Chief, President Obama was recently in Vietnam hyping the prospect of slashing tariffs on products imported into the United States, aggressively pushing a multinational corporation's sovereign-killing trade deal linking 40% of the global economy into a full-blown smackdown on the already struggling U.S. economy. The LA Times writes, Ordinarily, a presidential administration would wait until Congress ratifies a trade agreement before putting it into force with member nations. But with just eight months left in office and presidential candidates Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and Bernie Sanders all against the deal, Obama and his advisors appear to have concluded that they must speed up that lengthy process to preserve the trade pact. This president of ours is blatantly taking this country down and spreading his belly full of total loathing for America across the globe. This is the same president that signed the NDAA in the middle of the night after threatening to veto it, a document guaranteeing that American citizens can be disappeared by the authorities without any explanation, much less their rights. These people are saying that the passing of the bill, basically it means to them that the Rubicon has been crossed that uh, this means America will become complete and possibly irreversible a totalitarian military state. Well, then our only hope is some defective armed force members. I think that's our only chance is the military needs to enforce our constitution and our congressmen are trampling over the rules that were established over 200 years ago. And that's the whole problem. There's too much corruption in the executive branch and in the congressional. The same president behind a draft to install a government official into each home to oversee your children. The document states, the first step in systematically embedding effective family engagement practices in educational settings is to establish a culture where families are seen as assets and partners in children's development. The same president that lied his tail off to get into office in order to enact globalist New World Order directives while simultaneously rewarding the corporate demons running the central banks with toppled regimes and more central banks. Obama is the first president in U.S. history to not see a single year of 3% GDP growth. That is who was apologizing to Japan and Vietnam for the rhetoric of Donald Trump. They're rattled by it. And for good reason, because a lot of the uh, proposals that he's made display either ignorance of world affairs or a cavalier attitude or an interest in getting tweets and headlines instead of actually thinking through what it is that is required to keep America safe and secure and prosperous. If they're rattled in a friendly way, we're going to have great relationships with these countries. He's a president who's done a horrible job. Everybody understands that. He's a president who's allowed many of these countries to totally take advantage of him and us, unfortunately. And he's got to say something. And it's unusual that every time he has a press conference, he's talking about me. Say what you want about Trump. The majority group who support Trump are white families with a lot of money. How be it? You are an absolute fool if you can't stomach the facts and realize that Obama is a thousand times worse. In years to come, if the United States is still here, we will be adamantly apologizing for electing President Barack Obama to two terms. In America, there's a failure to appreciate Europe's leading role in the world. Instead of celebrating your dynamic union and seeking to partner with you to meet common challenges, there have been times where America's shown arrogance and been dismissive. John Bound for Infowars.com.
we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea, a new world order, a world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think, only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning of a new international order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. We are now facing a common challenge. And the challenge is how to build a world order for the first time in history on a global basis. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities and there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. New World Order is the headline in the Globe and Mail in Canada. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Of course we are. We are absolutely slaves to central banks.